For this video, I'm inside of Photoshop and we're working off of copper.psd. And one of the strengths of Moho is the ability to import PSD or Photoshop documents into the software. And you can retain the layer structure that you have set up inside the original PSD. So you can see here on the right, we have access to a variety of layers and groups, and we can retain this layer structure as we go into Moho. So let's go over this really quick, just so you can get an idea of some practices to keep in mind when designing a character in Photoshop. And just another small note, you don't have to use Photoshop for this. If you want to use something like Clip Studio, Procreate, or any application that allows you to export PSDs, that will work. So here, starting at the top, you can see that we have a head group. And underneath that, we have the body group, and then we have the tail separate from everything else. Now, there isn't a rule that says you need to group your layers as head, body, and going in here, you can see we have other sub layers, but it does help in this case. So starting with the head, and the head houses everything. As you can see, if we were to toggle the visibility, the head disappears and reappears. We can start with the eyelids here at the top. And you'll see that they're actually turned off or invisible by default. And if we were to toggle the visibility of these, we suddenly can see the eyelids appear for the character. If we break this down further, you'll see that we have the actual graphics right here. So we have the top eyelid for the left eye, as well as the bottom lid. And the same goes for the right eye. In Moho, we can easily turn this into a switch layer so we can toggle it on and off or we could even go further with our layer setup to include individual controls for each eye. But we'll get to that as we move to Moho. Continuing on to the eyes, if we drop this down, you'll see that we have three different groups, and each of these represent different phases of the eyes. So open is the one that we have visible right now. And if we go inside of open, you'll see that we have two eyes, go in there, and then we have access to the pupil as well as the eyeball itself. And the same goes for your other eyes down here. The reason why this is important to note where the pupils are is you could rig up the pupils to move around inside of Moho. And then we have the blink up and down. Right here we have access to what appears to be a blink phase for a happy and perhaps more sleepy or content look. So if we hide the open eyes and go over here to blink down, and let's also hide the eyelids, you can see that his eyes are closed and this could be used for perhaps if he's amused with something going on in the scene. And then the up phase makes it look more like perhaps he's sleepy, you know, ready to take a break, that kind of thing. And we can use this in Moho, the eyes group, as a switch, so that way we can swap between whichever pose we want to use. So with that, we have the nose, which is just a graphic by itself. And if we were, let's say, designing a character with a large nose, we might want to rig that nose up with physics or something to that effect. So that's why it's good to have the nose separate. And then you have the mouths right here, and there are a lot of mouth poses, and again, this is going to be used as a switch inside of Moho. So you're only going to see one mouth pose at a time. And this can be useful for lip syncing. And we'll get to that as we continue along with the process of bringing this into Moho. Then you have the head and then the two ears. Then you have the body group. And inside here, you're going to find your limbs, hands, as well as the torso. So here we have the front hand as well as the front arm. And then we have two pieces making up the scarf. And if we wanted to, since this is separate, we could add, let's say, a little bone to the scarf in Moho and add physics to that. But just to keep in mind, you can separate out elements that you want to do more with in Moho. We have a button, and then you have the body or the jacket itself, your legs, and then your other hand down below. Now, just one thing to note, the arms 
come with hands, as you can see here, we can hide this hand. And this is useful to have your hands separate. And especially if you want to swap the hand in and out with different hand poses with a group, you could do that. But one thing to note, the legs don't have any feet. You can just see that it's one graphic and that's okay. You don't have to have feet in order to rig something up. I just wanted to note that we do have separate hands from the arms, but the legs contain the feet in their layers. And then you have your tail on the bottom at the end. So once again, a lot of this will be used for creating switch layers, that is these groups. However, groups are also used just for organization as well. So once again, you don't have to set up your characters exactly like this, but this rig does contain some good practices to keep in mind as you start to learn the process of rigging and animating in Moho.